Okay, today we're going to talk about how to sell on LinkedIn using LinkedIn ads to sell what you sell, potentially, and with I have. The case studies I have to show, 1000% plus return on investment campaigns that you can run there on LinkedIn. I'll go through what kind of campaigns those were. I'm going to also tell you how to run your own campaign, what I actually do to kind of cookie cutter the process which a re where you have a repeatable process that you can use without having to get work any harder than you have to given that I've done this enough times I know all the parts that are pretty much the same each time or can be similar each time and you can go ahead and just input the, the parts that do have to change yourself using the framework that I you know work with that basically will work every time I'm using the LinkedIn ads now when it is where I'm in a market where it does work pretty good. I do admit I don't use LinkedIn ads all the time. Um, but that said, that's mainly on me because I'm probably too reliant on Google and Facebook. LinkedIn ads could work way more than what I'm using it to the point where if you really get creative, you could use it basically for about any market. Okay. Um, as long as you have the product or service that you're selling and you sell it, um, you're not like drop shipping or something that, like that. That would be the only thing because there's a way to package up and sell what you have to businesses and I'll get into that. So you know, what I always, and I, as I mentioned on this channel, I usually start out with Google ads because it's, I'm not trying to do, make the work any harder for myself than I have to. Nobody does want that, obviously. So I'll start out with Google because those people are already looking for what you have right now and buy it right now. So it, it takes the least effort to get the most sales. And then I'll go into dabbling you know, with a little bit of Facebook and then a little LinkedIn after that. Um, or LinkedIn after Google. But Google slash and then I'll also do Bing before I do any real display advertising. Um, but I'll also do Google Display Network generally before I do LinkedIn as well. So, because it's in terms of the scale and effort to put in, Google, you know, search engine advertising works the best and the easiest, it gets me the most sales with the least amount of effort. Then I get into like a little Google Display Network. Why? Because it's so targeted, it's unbelievable. And then we can get into Facebook slash LinkedIn. Um, the, where you can target the least specifically with your display advertising, but it can still work. So it can work though for just about everybody. So you're watching this video, you, uh, are, you basically um, are the ones, you're not drop shipping, you're not uh, you're affiliate advertiser. You could use LinkedIn to make quite a bit of money using this framework. I'm gonna go into then how to do that with a, after a quick introduction here and let's get into it. Not many people know how to use Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads. I, I kind of you know put those into the same category. Right. And the same reason for the same reason they don't know how to use Facebook ads, they don't know how to use LinkedIn ads right either. A lot of people when what I mean by that is a lot of people when they're going back to what I was saying before most people also start out with Google because they think oh my customers are already looking for five pound bowling balls so obviously if I put my ad there I'll make money whereas it's a lot more to it than that you have to actually beat the other people running the ads that are there unless you're the first one doing it and you are selling something that nobody else the, the, the motor on your business is so high nobody can do what you do and people are actively searching for it and you're the only option that um, it's a totally different story with just display advertising in general i.e. anything any PPC that's not search engine advertising you got to be able to capture that person's attention when they're not there to buy what you sell so it takes something more substantial to get their attention and get them to commit to some take some of their time to look at what you have but more specifically than that, generally what that takes, also because they're usually not in a buying mode, then you gotta give them, a lot of times not just say, here's what I have, do you wanna buy it? You gotta kind of woo them. 
you got to perhaps provide some information first. Then from the information, then you can sell it to them. Um, which we call in the marketing industry a funnel. You got to create a funnel instead of just having like a Google search. You search for five pound bowling balls, bowling balls, here's a five pound bowling ball, do you want to buy it? That works just fine there. That, and that's actually the only thing that we want to do, whereas on display ads, you got to do the opposite. So they'll try a Facebook ad thinking Google is like Facebook. They put their five pound bowling balls for sale. They run a lookalikes campaign where you know they're trying to target people that look like the people that have been on their site or purchased already and the shit doesn't work. Um, your targeting specifically on Facebook on LinkedIn is not good enough to find people even with their lookalikes algorithm to find effectively somebody who wants to take who is scrolling through their feed haha -ha, that's funny five pound bowling balls awesome I'm gonna whip out my, my wallet right now and buy that even if you have an exciting product, generally speaking, unless it's super, super exciting, that model doesn't, isn't going to work that great. Um, generally, it has to be exciting and you have to be the only one doing it because if you, you're, respectively, you'll have competition and it, it's just really, really difficult to get it like a, you know, the eight to one to 10 to one ROI doing that. Um, the exception being that if you ran the ad for a long enough time, we're talking six months, 12 months, 18 months, that Facebook ad will eventually figure out how to place your customer with your products um, through pro, you know, a trial and error. This didn't work, this didn't work. But um, I'd say more often than not though, just having your product there or example of your product and trying to have Facebook or LinkedIn find your customer, that's not gonna work, okay? So that's the first thing you've got to just get out of the way. You can try, go ahead and try to run LinkedIn ads that way. Um, respectively, target just business owners and you know business owners there or uh, HR managers buy what you sell or you could fr there's one of the people that buy what you sell. You try to target them. There's your product. Possibly it will work. Go ahead and there's no harm in trying it, but if you run it and, and the ROI is like 0.25% after 90 days, you know that's probably never going to eventually work. Um, if you're halfway there in terms of your ROI target, maybe you can keep going. But this second option is more likely to what have, has to work for you, um, which generally will work all the time, um, but takes a little bit more effort. Unless you already got a super hot selling product or service, you generally need a dedicated decent offer plus funnel to send people through. It's not like search engine ads for the for most people. I just which I just went through a minute ago. Okay, so what's this funnel and offer that I got to come up with that's different, you know, IE different than here's my product, do you want to buy it or not? One great way to put a special offer together for LinkedIn specifically since it's more a business oriented community obviously which which even if you aren't selling to businesses, this is fine because you can make one, i.e. an offer that sells to a wholesaler, a distributor, or business customer as the order value makes it easy to pay for the ads. Plus it gets a lower P CPC than about anything else I found you can do on LinkedIn with two to three times the CTR. So going over what that actually means so you sell some product. I mean, when you're not a dropshipper, you're not an affiliate person, which I mentioned, you guys, I can't see how this works for you, but um, you get your product from China or a US supplier, you sell it to your, your customer's retail. Um, you know you get distributor queries, and I've got a video about how to get more distributors uh, selling for you using Google search ads, namely that is, um, you target all the distributor keywords, all the people looking for like your product wholesale and then set up a landing page for that. You'll explode the number of inquiries you get and the number of people reselling for you you get out of country, in country, all kinds of stuff. But you, what you do, if you, you already got some business customers that buy this, right, they, for their businesses. So what you can do because you know some businesses sell or buy what you have whether it's to resell or just maybe they use it in a business context what you could do 
is make an offer surrounding that. So we're talking about trying to attract somebody who would resell your product, okay? That's exactly what we do. We talk about in our ad, hey, you could resell our product and here's why that would be a good idea for you. So instead of now you, you having a, you're interrupting them with some trash, basically, you're giving them an opportunity, a business opportunity. And with the business opportunity, you aren't just saying, you could sell this, that's the, you know, provide no information, which that's, you're still interrupting them. You provide them information along the lines of, here's what you can make selling this, here's proof of this. Now you've got a hot selling ad there in terms of get somebody, when you have a sales funnel, it's all about just getting them when they weren't intending to buy something just one step further towards making a purchase than they were before by clicking on your ad. And then when they see the information or whatever you have on the other side of the ad, now they're a little bit closer and then potentially you have to do other actions to get a step further, step further, and you woo them into, and you seduce them into the process of eventually buying. Um, a lot of people with sales funnels where they offer information, as I mentioned on this channel, it's very effective to have information and then at the end of the information you have your phone number saying, hey, I'm, I'm the owner, if you have questions about this, give me a call. And then have, there's a way to have a, a system set up that if they have to enter their email address to get the information, which I recommend, you can have a, a system which you can find these online where 15 minutes after they fill out the contact form for the information, you could have a phone, your, the uh, automated system that calls your salesperson and says, XYZ person filled out the form, would you like to talk to them? Press one to be connected with the person who filled out the form. The salesperson presses one, and they call them and say, hey, I noticed you filled out the, and requested the information. Is there any, John, is there any uh, way that I, do you have any other questions about this? Uh, if not, I just would like to you know, let you know that I'm here. If you do have questions about this in the future, just try to get the conversation going further. You're not selling. You, that gets them a step further into making a sale. And maybe they don't make a sale then, but actually follow them up two or three more times in the future. They are ready to make a sale. So that is more so the process with the display ad that's effective than just saying you buy in one step. So, but the thing is, you got information about people that ha that do resell your product that other people that would resell your product would want it if they knew that information would resell your product and that's what you're going to package up here okay and enough so that if you do that kind of thing there's a lot of people that um, that want to know that entrepreneurs as a whole they like to they're always looking a lot of times for a new opportunity new business even though I'm one for just figure out how to scale your own business, period, basically, unless there's no possible way out of it, and then you can start a second business. A lot of people, they just need to focus on their marketing more. But the fact that you have a case study that says how much you can make reselling your product, you can get a shitload of click-through rate on that ad. And if you didn't know already or see my other videos, click the rate on the display ad on LinkedIn or other where, another, any other place is directly related to the cost per click you pay. LinkedIn, a lot of people don't do LinkedIn because the cost per click is like seven bucks a click. If you have, if you're the average Joe advertising and don't come up with a decent offer, you come up with an offer like that where you're saying you can get a, you know, you can make you know, $500 a day selling this product like our other customers do, you can get three times the click through rate anybody ever, the average person does on LinkedIn that's big, that doesn't know what they're doing, we'll just simply put it as that, and now you're paying two bucks a click like you would pay on Facebook, okay? Now it's reasonable, and as a small side to this, don't be discouraged by the $7 per click cost on LinkedIn, the traffic is literally three to four times as valuable as Facebook traffic. It just is. I've run these studies. The cost per lead is actually cheaper on LinkedIn than Facebook. And when you work, look at the lead quality and everything else, you're going to get the same amount of sales on Facebook versus LinkedIn, with, even with having to pay seven bucks a click on LinkedIn versus two bucks a click on face, Facebook. So. 
when you you're basically you get a two bucks per click for highly highly valuable clicks on LinkedIn. Now you're in a position to really make money and really get a good ROI because you gave somebody something instead of just interrupting them, you gave them something that they were they were happy that they discovered. That should be always your goal with display ads. They should say, "Oh shit, this is awesome!" Click. That's what your actual goal is. Yes, it's not very hard or fun, or it's, it's hard and it's not very fun to come up with something like that. But if you want to make a ton of money doing display ads, that's what it usually takes. Sorry, it's just the way that it is. It's not that hard to come up with that. It's much easier just to say, "Here's my product. Do you want it?" and then. Be done with the whole process in 60 days because the whole campaign failed. You don't have to worry about it anymore. This is the average loser's mentality of uh, uh, how they go about doing the ad. Um, as soon as it doesn't work, they don't say, hmm, I wonder why it didn't work. They just quit. Oh, LinkedIn ads don't work. It's all about how you do it. So as far as that goes, though, okay, I'll, there's a... You know, basic three-step process for, to actually execute this that I'm going to go through, and the consumer on why that product's so good. So that over time, this this is a like an auto, automated marketing system for you. Over the next six to twelve months, between the time that you call them back, they're starting to see why this product's so good. So basically, when you talk to them again, they're going to say, "Yeah, I've seen your ads. There's something again." To, Instead of like, yeah, I talked to you six months ago, go away. I've seen your other ads. So that's going to make whatever you do work twice as good if you do follow up on the ads. I know that because I do follow up like that on every campaign I run because it will basically double what you're able to earn on your PPC if you do no follow up versus good follow up like that. You can add that in as well. And that's the funnel then as that will work most of the time for most people on LinkedIn in a nutshell. With all that said, to be successful, as you, as I mentioned on many other PPC videos here on this channel, you gotta have tracking. You gotta know what your numbers are going in to w when you're gonna be successful. Successful, because you don't want to get into it and, and, and you're spending about all this money and say, "Am I making money or not?" And then panic. Okay, before you run your ads. Figure out how many of these customers that you decided that you're going to target that you need to be successful on such and such budget. Okay, and then from there, obviously you're not going to know the close rate on the leads you get, but as you get started, try to get that data as quickly as possible and try to as quickly as possible figure out that if you know that you pay a hundred bucks for a lead based upon your close rates and what you're you know going to sell this for on average. And if you don't, if, if, if what you sell it for is going to vary, come up with an average as best as you can. Everybody says they can't come up with an average I deal with for B2B. Come up with an average anyway. Figure out about what your cost per lead needs to be so that when you're running these ads, it's very easy to stick with it. You can see what your cost per lead is every day, every month, you know, whatever, right there in your LinkedIn account after you set up your tracking. And then it's all just about figuring out and maintaining the cost per lead, and it should just be, you know, it will, you'll go on to make millions of dollars long term with this campaign because it runs, you know that it's going to make money because the cost per lead doesn't went up too high, and then that's what you should do. But you know, respectively, try to, before you even spend money on the ad, so figure out what your cost per lead should be to be profitable, considering that on those leads, you'll probably get 10% of them to buy, which is a you know, common number we deal with. And you know you're making you know three thousand dollars on a sale or eight hundred dollars on a sale. Then respectively, you could pay um, you know probably thirty bucks for a lead with the, to get the same ROI that you're looking for in terms of factoring what your expenses of that product or service is, and then try to have that set up your tracking, then run your campaign, and try to hit that number. As you get into it, you can see what your real close rate is, and maybe adjust your target cost per lead. But that's what the pros are doing. Pros are not going in, running an ad, and looking at their bank account every two weeks and wonder if their bank account went up or not. That's not the way to go about doing it. You want to know you have a target all the time as you go through this, and you want the tracking set up day one. Don't wait. Set it up. Half the value of what you're getting is just knowing if it what worked and what didn't work. Potentially, 
you'll be able to add in their revisions instead of saying male female you'll just get rid of female and so forth and then so it's so that your fifty dollar cost per lead that you needed you, you're now getting it it was from 80 got rid of female now you're down to 50 where it needs to be the data will tell you what works and what doesn't work so even if you don't have your target cost per lead yet it's just about carving out more and more and more of what you have until you do have it and then maybe you are going to make quite as much as what you thought overall but at least you'll make some and make it at the ROI that you had wanted it when you started out that's what PP, good that's what PPC management is all about in the first place tracking making revisions hitting a target cost per conversion, and then hopefully scaling after that. Um, of course, scaling in this particular instance may be hard. Scaling would more about, be about, you try it for one business customer type, maybe you do it for another customer type next. But a bit, as far as not knowing what the customer is worth, ultimately, you could set up your tracking so that when a lead comes in, your CRM, if you're using one, which if you aren't using a CRM with this, I would recommend start using one because you have to follow up those leads to get the full value out of those leads because most of them won't buy right away, like I said. Half, you know, less than half will buy instantly when right away when they read the content. You know, like maybe 20% will buy right away. You have to follow them up for this to work really well. So, but when the lead cut, the, when you fill out, when they fill out the form, that lead information should go into your CRM automatically with the sort the in, with the indication if it came from LinkedIn or not. So what, when they buy, you'll know how many people bought and how much they spent from LinkedIn, so you could know if you're on track. Um, not only that, you can use the data about who bought and you can feed that back into your LinkedIn account using offline conversion tracking, so that it'll show you all the sales you made. And the ROI that you're making, this amount of ROI came from male, this much ROI came from female. Um, if you break it up, the, I won't get into the details on that, but just giving you a basic example here. So that when you do go to try to carve out and make your thing more efficient, assuming it's not profitable yet, it'll tell you exactly this part of the account got this ROI, this part got this ROI. You could actually take your campaign and break it out so it's one is just females, one is just males. And from there, you can see the ROI difference between the, the two, and potentially one you just won't run. You'll try, you know, one where you're targeting people just in the bigger cities versus the rest of the U.S. There's unlimited options there, but you can split test and figure out which ones aren't worth running because you can't get the level of ROI that you want. And uh, there's a way to do the, the feeding your data from your CRM back into your LinkedIn account, so you can see not just what produced what cost of lead, which is only so good, you can see how much revenue came from this particular ad versus another ad or another campaign that was meant to target another subset of people that I was supposed to target and the profit that came from that and decide exactly, you can see exactly what that ad, the ROI is, potentially, it'll, it doesn't count perfectly, but it gives you a general idea, you know, this. You know, people that are from the top 20 cities, which is represented in this campaign, is twice as profitable as, you know, the other the campaign for the rest of the U.S. So therefore, and you know, overall, I'm not profitable yet. I'll just run the top 20 cities, and then bang, now I'm on, prof I'm at profitability now. Um, so it's all about a lot of times. It's not about you want to start out with a really good foundation, which is a really good ad, a really good offer, all that stuff. But the, you know, half of it is just tracking knowing what to eliminate, and then that's where you get the rest of the way to profit a lot of times. Sometimes you may not have to revision it at all because the offer is so good, I will admit. But I'm just saying, if your profit isn't good enough, there's a way, don't give up, you just have to you know, slice out the part of the account that's doing basically nothing, the 20-30% that's doing nothing. There's always some 20-30% that's basically doing nothing, and you just gotta find it. Okay, so last thing here, case studies. So real quick here, I'm going to go over this about different products where this has worked before, where I've done it personally before, and the results that we got. The first one was for a luxury mailbox. So for this, it's a B2C product. We just went after people that basically um, like the architects and home builders type of thing. 
so when basically you can buy a, a, a quality mailbox for your house but people that build houses they gotta you know display options for their houses of what kind of mailbox is going to be you know where it's built into the house or whatever when it is and um, so they put their mailbox in front of those people those key decision makers up at those home builders that would be able to actually decide which options their customers are showing when they're presented and go through the sales process with their customers about what kind of home they want given it's a new concept this worked well um, there wasn't really anything out like it then and get people interested in that particular new concept of design and it worked very well why so well well you don't need very many home builders that decide to put that in their catalog before you've made but practically speaking one big home builder will pay for twenty five thousand dollars with the ad spend that's the type of situation you want to get yourself in if possible because you can't lose in that situation with any of this you probably don't have to do any revisions to it you just have to target it like I told you with the right ad like I told you and you're already making money with PPC it's about trying to come up with one way to make money and then you layer on another and another and this is how you know multi-million dollar ad campaigns are built and this is just you know one idea you can have but 2500 plus percent ROI in that particular case because the deal size was so big primarily not that it was an amazing ad and you know offer this was ju just put was sent to a page that explained what the, what the, um, the what the mailbox is like its features the few features it had and people responded through a contact form that that that's all that was there was no uh, content to download or anything like that the content download and then the call afterwards you may have to there certainly have that if you have something really good you may not have to have that in this case they did not have to have that air filters so right after COVID started air filter company wanted to advertise their air filters as COVID you, know, you protect your customers against COVID and there's dentist offices buying this and so they advertise it towards the dentist uh, at the dentist office talked about this a little bit briefly but basically hey you know targeted at dentists dentists are using this in their office for their patients and driving that to a page of information about how the dentists are using this why they're using it how well it works that kind of thing and then respectively a way for them to click in this particular case you don't need that depending on how good your offer is again you have a sales page that talks all of just about dentists there why you would want it for as a dentist these other dentists why they pick this one that's the type of thing you will have to do here and you have to be decent with copywriting and making landing pages for this to work but at the end of the page you click and you can go to a sales page which the sales page is just a a um, a like a checkout page which is the same air filter you sell to everybody else which is what we did in this case but they thought this was something that was specialized to dentists and it's not so technically when you sell something like an air filter this is how you build a PPC campaign that gets really good returns maybe make an air uh, page that's good for people who have allergies talk about how this is the perfect thing for allergies which it's good for allergies you're not lying to people and then make it look like though it's specialized for allergies that kind of thing but anyway they did it that for that on LinkedIn worked pretty good 780 percent ROI on that particular campaign so there's another idea you could take a B2C product package it up into a B2B once you see that you have certain B2B customers which are like dentists for getting it for their offices and try to sell it to all the other dentists spend management so this particular campaign the spend management is like where they come into your company they renegotiate all your contracts they call your phone company and they say we want a lower rate we're gonna switch if you don't give us a lower rate and they get you a lower rate and they go to this vendor and they say can we get a discount and then they look at this do we do we really need this this looks like it's wasted there's no reason you know, and they come to you like as a CFO and they say we saved you all this money and then basic or in these things we recommend you cut out because it looks wasted whatever uh, but mostly it's about renegotiating the contracts well anyway this is not a new concept so you're not going to excite anybody by seeing this like with the first two I gave you here 
But with that, like I said before, if, it's, if you have a just a common concept out there, you could talk. So we targeted CFOs, and then we went at them with um, spend management service saves this amount for this C, uh, this uh, CFO, and then CY. Or it well, wasn't an exact that, but that's the general premise there, the general framework. The idea being, what if I'm a C, CFO, I want to know what other CFOs are doing to save money because that's my whole thing. And so, if you're going to tell me how other CFOs are saving five thousand dollars a month or f on five percent of your bill, in this particular case, it was like per, x number of percentage of revenue saved or 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 eliminated this much percentage of cost of their company. I'm going to click on that because that's my job to know and I'm just intrigued to find out how I can make it seem like I'm doing a better job myself. They're always looking for uh, you know, their own promotions and raises and bonuses and whatever too. So we send them to a page that just goes through like what I was talking about, what they do. We, would, we had this company, we called, we called this place, we did this, we did this, we did this. They say three per, out of their Revenue is 3% of what they had, they didn't have to pay anymore. And all they had to do was hire us. We do all the work. So even though it's not a new concept, going further into reveal what kind of results you get specifically, they don't care about so much how you do it. That won't get you anywhere. But we got this much results. CFO, CFOs, would you like to, this is another way to do it. CFOs, would you like to say 3% of your company's revenue in 30 days, see how we did it with XYZ company. And they click, they go read it. Because you're targeting just CFOs, you could do something like, hey, CFO. And that gets extremely high response rates when you can speak to the person like that. It's not creepy to say CFO. You can't say, hey, you know, diabetes sufferer. Now that's works, but Obviously, that's crossing the privacy line a little bit. Or CFOs absolutely do it. Or title, any title. Hey, facility manager. Or see how this facility, if you don't want to do it, then you just stick with, hey, see how this facility manager end up saving $5,000 a year on their maintenance costs. And then you go that way. So anyway, with that particular thing, and this is a B2B sale. So you aren't going to get people to read that thing and probably respond right away. So that one actually was where they had a um, opt-in first where you, to get the content. And they tried to you know, follow up the leads. As I said, normally, I, if, if, it's a B2, if you're selling B2B normally, you want an opt-in. You want an opt-in form to see how you know, XYZ company saved 3% of their company expenses in 30 days by using a spend management service. And you could, when, by the way, just to take a quick side here, don't even say that it's you. you it can, this is called having a blind ad. See how this, specifically I'll tell you how to execute this in reality. I didn't clarify here though, um, the, the last part of what I said here, if you sell your product, obviously you only get so much money out of selling one product to one person at one time, or potentially you have a customer you can sell a few times, but if you get a reseller, now you get, you know, the customer's worth thousands potentially, right? So what you're, you're paying, you know, even two bucks a click on LinkedIn, it's kind of expensive, maybe it's kind of expensive for you. The fact that you could get a sale where you're going to be making $5,000 in future revenue, by having a new distributor when you get one, that also helps subsidize greatly the whole process that you're going through and the ad cost. So this whole method that I have here in general, it's great because it gives, there's something that you can package up that people want to see, so you get a cheaper rate per click, and when you do get a sale, you can afford a lot of clicks and a lot of ad spend because you're selling to somebody who's going to be making a bigger purchase than what your normal purchase would be on Google or what have you. So it's hard to screw it up, in other words. You give them what they want, when they buy, they buy a shitload. So as far as coming up with a LinkedIn ad that might be effective, this is really hard to screw up and this is my go-to 
out of basically, if I can, if I need to go on LinkedIn for this company, this is what I'm going to. Um, so it works for B2B companies, and with the B2C, you just go to kind of the reseller angle, and this could work great. If you're going to the B2B angle, it also works great as well, and respectively with that, you're doing basically the same thing. You're not saying, here's my service, you're saying, here's why it works, and you're targeting the person that would care. To get them into the, the buying process, some people will get out the other side. Um, they see the information, you hopefully do what I mentioned uh, in either case where to get that information because once you've got a, a juicy piece of information they want so bad, i.e. how much they can make selling XYZ or how much they can make using XYZ, they'll give you their email address and their phone number. They just will. Now you've got something using with that, there at the end of the content, but you have to write it as well as you can in first person, uh, from a first person angle, because that works the best. At the end of the content, you say, I'm the one who wrote this, um, or I'm the owner, or I'm the manager, call me if you have any other questions, and then you actually call them 15 minutes after they read it as well, and try to get their name in a database, which if they don't buy today, they eventually follow up and they buy later. They, and that's, it, it's, a, it's more like a B2B sales process than a, like what a, a one-off, to see sale would sale would be which it is either way I mean you're selling to businesses this is how it works business to business sales because the purchases are bigger people need to go through different levels of approval it's just how business to business sales is done but here's the process first look at the business customers you have find out why they bought so um, respectively if you're B2C you know sell the businesses out of the business customers you have Okay, some might be distributors. Some might have just bought for their business because they just wanted it for their business versus their home. Okay, look through all your business customers, find out who you have, find out why they used it, and then think and see where you have a lot of different customers that might match up, indicating that there's a certain size of market there that you could go after. and. Um, Figure out who you want to target there, because we're going to be targeting same, the same people. We're not going to try to go after new people. We're going to go after whoever bought already, because that's going to be to have the highest success chance of working already, and because we know what to say to these people that would actually get them motivated enough to click versus just scroll past and go back to what they were doing, looking at funny stories or inspirational quotes on LinkedIn or whatever uh, they, were, they were actually on LinkedIn in the first place for. Then two, create ads that focus on the customer's results. Again, I already talked about this, where what people wanna see if you're gonna interrupt them and what they're gonna be motivated to click and actually go ahead and give you their email phone number for that you're actually gonna get is telling them information that can make the money or save the money. Basically, you stick to that. That's the stuff that everybody, that universally everybody wants. They wanna make money, they wanna save money. And, um, for a business especially. So with that, um, if you have a new, you know, the product's being bought and it's kind of a new concept for people, basically the angle that I take is the ad is, did you know that people, are, people like you are using this and here are their results? If it's a, like a, a concept everybody knows about already, basically, then I'll say XYZ is getting these results, CY, as far as the ad goes. And so, in that case, they'll, they'll click. So, depending if, if, if the, because if it's a concept they're not familiar with that you use XYZ product or XYZ service for this reason, you start out by saying, did you know people like you are using this and here are the results. If they already know people like them are using it, then you say, this particular company like you, not like you, but the idea being they know it's like them. It's, it is them or like them. Here's their results. That either So you go with that angle, you're gonna get that super high 2% or so click through rate on your ad. You're gonna get a cost per click closer to two bucks universally from that angle 
whether it's, a, you know, as you know, a new concept or an old concept, either way, you'll be able to get those numbers. That's going to pretty much get you great results every single time. So number three, you handpick all the companies with, with LinkedIn accounts to target, filter to CEOs or equivalent. So let's say you're targeting dentists. Your product is used by, by used in dental offices. Um, you know dentists like using the product in dental offices. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to target only dentists on LinkedIn as far as getting into the, where the targeting is going to be set up here. So a lot of times, like with LinkedIn, because dentist is, a dentist is a common profession, you could target just dentists on LinkedIn and you're done. If you're in an industry like where you only have to target certain companies, owners of other companies, not a dental practice, but something else, and um, <clears throat> respectively, so we're, we're assuming the dentist, if you need a dental owner, then you would need, de you would need dentist, but you would also have to say dentist and CEO. So you get dental owners. If you need an owner of a company of a sawmill, and only them, to try to show them the results that somebody who's buying your product for use in a sawmill gets, then you go ahead and you have to make a list of all the sawmills in the U.S. or what you know in your country or wherever, whether you're targeting U.S. wide or some other place. It, which is going to take some time. You get a data entry person. You go through and you find all the sawmill companies. And then of that, which sawmill companies are on LinkedIn? You find that list. Once you've done that, you can upload the list of companies, this list of sawmills that are on LinkedIn to your LinkedIn ads where you set up your campaign there. It'll accept a list. And so you can say if by default, if anybody at any one of these sawmills are on LinkedIn, they'll at a, at a base they're eligible to see my ad. Respectively, if you need the owner of the sawmill, you would have to do these companies and CEO. And there's a lot of different you know, versions of CEO. I recommend doing CEO, owner, and there could be. Um, well, those are the two main variants. There's, I know there's a couple more that LinkedIn has, but so you make sure you get up what equivalent, what is the equivalent of the owner anyway? And so if you say that then they're from these companies and owner, now you're getting just the owner of the sawmills. It's perfectly lined up now to get the ad and the little PDF, if you will, that says your sawmill customer who used your product got great results and here's what they were to get it in front of the exact person who's going to want to see that information. Okay, so respectively beyond that, they, have, you, they also have different job titles. If you want to target just the CFO at those sawmills, you can do that. If you want to target just the CFOs, if you know any CFO would use your product and it would be relevant and your ad and piece of content is for all CFOs collectively, then you would target CFOs alone. But sometimes the the, the job title option that you that you can select from that the excuse me that determines if you're going to target the CFO, CIO, whatever doesn't have the position. Maybe it's facilities manager. You don't have that. And even they actually do have that. Um, what you can do is you can go ahead and there's a company called Nextmark. You can search for Nextmark lists on Google. And when you go there, you can search for like facility manager. And you'll, you'll find this mailing list of facility managers that you can rent or buy. From that, they usually have the email addresses. So from that, you can take that list of email addresses and you can use it to run your LinkedIn campaign by uploading that list of email addresses. So instead of targeting 
um, basically the you know, using the internal settings here for the targeting that LinkedIn provides you could just target if it's if you just have to target facility managers you can do that okay um, if you needed facility managers at this list of companies technically you could do you know the, th these list of companies and this email list both that must be sawmill here's the list of sawmills must be the facility manager here's the list of facility managers that I found that basically is every facility manager in the US and now you combine the list which now you're targeting just the facility manager at the sawmill so there's really no way that based upon the cust the business customer that you'd like to sell to can't be targeted at you know at that level based upon what company they work at, what title they are. And those are the, basically the two targeting options that you want for this. It's the business customer is an owner, it's a somebody else, and it's a certain type of company, or it's just a certain type of um, you know, worker at a company, or a certain type of person at a type of company. The targeting doesn't get any more complicated than that. You can mix and match company and title to, you know, a little bit differently based upon your actual offer and market and what you're selling, but that's pretty much it. You stick with that, that's basically what's going to, just to keep it simple, and what I do to keep it simple when I set up my campaigns. So with that, you target your you know, facility manager at the sawmills across the U.S. with my offer that says, did you know sawmill facility managers are saving five grand a month on their sawmill equipment maintenance procedures see why and then the sawmill facility manager sees this ad there's no way they're not clicking on that ad right or not every time but like three times more likely for sure and if the content delivers you it's not only gets you the click your content has to deliver you have to if you can't write well, you gotta have an actual copywriter write this. Good copywriters are a hundred bucks an hour plus. Sorry, yeah, you may fall off your chair already based upon how much you gotta pay someone to do writing, but I'm telling you, to keep someone locked in and engaged reading a 15 piece of con minutes piece of content, even if the nature of what you're sharing is good, it still needs to be written in a way that's engaging or whatever. So it's not boring and reveals the right thing at the right time and so on and so forth. You package that up, you don't need to have more than like maximum, you know, two, three thousand words that share the what what it is, what the results were, and why they got those results, and how you could get those results, basically in that order. And then at the end, if you have questions about how to get these results or just questions about this study in general, I I'm the one who wrote this content. My name is Jake, here's my number, and then of course you call them after that. If you've written the writing well, most of the people will have read the writing, so when you call, instead of being like, eh, whatever, I don't care, the writing was so good that at the very least they're going to say, thank you for the, right, the piece of information you gave me, it was incredible. Normally I don't click on these type of things, but this, this one I did, and I'm glad I did. Thank you. That should, there's no reason why you can't do that with this particular model. So when they call, it's just almost like getting the best quality lead you can. As far as they may not be ready to buy yet, but they're receptive to whatever else you might say when you do call them. And the goal is, it, like I said, right away to get them to buy, but it's to get them in a database, and then you build up a database, and pretty soon, your salesperson, all they're doing is calling back all these people who read the content. You've, they've got you know, 1,500 people who read this content, which they call them once. You're going to be making sales bang, bang, like regularly after that. Because the leads, you call them back. The second time they call, they're going to be three to five times more likely to buy than the first time they call that you talk to them. And then the third time you talk to them, they're going to be three to five times more likely, and so on and so forth. And if you just put those contacts in with the with their list, you're going to get people to buy, and you'll start knocking them down one by one. So that's my favorite process here. You could spin that up a little bit. One other way that you can make it better is you run remarketing. They you get them to click on your ad, you 
do remarketing and have that same study show up from them again if you want, which is one way to remarket. The other way to remarket is you have reviews of the product that was in the case study or in the content that says how well it's rated on Google, Yelp, whatever. Then you have, if you have it, other testimonials. Maybe you only have one sawmill customer that got the results, which is fine. You just want all the rest of the sawmills in the rest of the country to buy your product. Um, then you could have other remarketing ads that go into the details of the product, on why it's so good, and why it gets great results. And then you have those ads and you link those to a blog post that goes into the features of the product. So you're slowly, bite, in bite-sized chunks, to the consumer on why that product's so good. So that over time, this, this is a, like an auto, automated marketing system for you. Over the next six to 12 months, between the time that you call them back, they're starting to see why this product's so good. So basically, when you talk to them again, they're gonna say, yeah, I've seen your ads. There's something again, to, instead of like, yeah, I talked to you six months ago, go away. I've seen your other ads. So that's gonna make whatever you do work twice as good if you do follow up on the ads. I know that, because I do follow up like that on every campaign I run because it will basically double what you're able to earn on your PPC if you do no follow-up versus good follow-up like that. You can add that in as well. And that's the funnel then as that will work most of the time for most people on LinkedIn in a nutshell. With all that said, to be successful as you as I mentioned on many other PPC videos here on this channel, you gotta have Tracking, you got to know what your numbers are going in to w when you're going to be successful Successful, because you don't want to get into it and, and, and you're spending all this money and say, am I making money or not? And then panic, okay? Before you run your ads, figure out how many of these customers that you decided that you're going to target that you need to be successful on such and such budget, okay? And then from there, Obviously, you're not going to know the close rate on the leads you get, but as you get started, try to get that data as quickly as possible and try to as quickly as possible figure out that if you know that you pay 100 bucks for a lead based upon your close rates and what you're you know, going to sell this for on average, and if, you don't, if, if, if what you sell it for is going to vary, come up with an average as best as you can. Everybody says they can't come up with an average I deal with for B2B. Come up with an average anyway. Figure out about what your cost per lead needs to be so that when you're running these ads, it's very easy to stick with it. You can see what your cost per lead is every day, every month, you know, whatever, right there in your LinkedIn account after you set up your tracking. And then it's all just about figuring out and maintaining the cost per lead. And it should just be, you know, it will, you'll go on to make millions of dollars long term with this campaign because it runs, you know that it's going to make money because the cost per lead doesn't went up too high. And then that's what you should do, but you know, respectively try to, before you even spend money on the ad, so figure out what your cost per lead should be to be profitable, considering that on those leads, you'll probably get 10% of them to buy, which is a you know, common number we deal with. And you know, you're making you know, $3,000 on a sale or $800 on a sale, then respectively you could pay um, you know, probably 30 bucks for a lead, with the, to get the same ROI that you're looking for in terms of factoring what your expenses of that product or service is, and then try to have that set up your tracking, then run your campaign, and try to hit that number. As you get into it, you can see what your real close rate is and maybe adjust your target cost per lead, but that's what the pros are doing. Pros are not going in, running an ad, and looking at their bank account every two weeks and wonder if their bank account went up or not. That's not the way to go about doing it. You want to know, you have a target, all the time as you go through this and you want the tracking set up day one don't wait set it up half the value of what you're getting is just knowing if it what worked and what didn't work potentially you'll be able to add in their revisions instead of saying male female you'll just get rid of female and so forth and then so it's so that your fifty dollar cost per lead that you needed you you're now getting it it was from 80 got rid of female now you're down to 50 where it needs to be the data will tell you what works and what doesn't work. So even if you don't have your target cost per lead yet, it's just about carving out more and more and more of what you have until you do have it. 
and then maybe you aren't going to make quite as much as what you thought overall, but at least you'll make some and make it at the ROI that you had wanted it when you started out. That's what, PP, good, that's what PPC management is all about in the first place. Tracking, making revisions, hitting a target cost per conversion, and then hopefully scaling after that. Um, of course, scaling in this particular instance may be hard. Scaling would more about, be about, you try it for one business customer type, maybe you do it for another customer type next. But and then as far as not knowing what the customer is worth, ultimately, you can set up your tracking so that when a lead comes in, your CRM, if you're using one, which if you aren't using a CRM with this, I would recommend start using one because you have to follow up those leads to get the full value out of those leads because most of them won't buy right away, like I said. Half, you know, less than half will buy instantly when right away when they read the content. You know, like maybe 20% will buy right away. You have to follow them up for this to work really well. So, but when the lead cut, the, when you fill out, when they fill out the form, that lead information should go into your CRM automatically with the sort the in, with the indication if it came from LinkedIn or not. So what, when they buy, you'll know how many people bought and how much they spent from LinkedIn. So you could know if you're on track. Um, not only that, you can use the data about who bought and you can feed that back into your LinkedIn account using offline conversion tracking so that it'll show you all the sales you made and the ROI that you're making. This amount of ROI came from male. This much ROI came from female. Um, if you break it up, the, I won't get into the details on that, but just giving you a basic example here. So that when you do go to try to carve out and make your thing more efficient, assuming it's not profitable yet, it'll tell you exactly this part of the account got this ROI, this part got this ROI. You could actually take your campaign and break it out so it's one is just females, one is just males. And from there, you can see the ROI difference between the, the two and potentially one you just won't run. You'll try you know, one where you're targeting people just in the bigger cities versus the rest of the US. There's unlimited options there, but you can split test and figure out which ones aren't worth running because you can't get the level of ROI that you want. And uh, there's a way to do the, the feeding your data from your CRM back into your LinkedIn account so you can see not just what produced what cost of lead, which is only so good, you can see how much revenue came from this particular ad versus another ad or another campaign that was meant to target another subset of people that I was supposed to target and the profit that came from that and decide exactly, you can see exactly what that ad, the ROI is potentially. It'll, it doesn't count perfectly, but it gives you a general idea. You know, this, you know, people that are from the top 20 cities, which is represented in this campaign is twice as profitable as you know, the other, the campaign for the rest of the U.S. So therefore, and you know, overall I'm not profitable yet, I'll just run the top 20 cities and then bang, now I'm on, prof I'm at profitability now. Um, so it's all about, a lot of times, it's not about you want to start out with a really good foundation, which is a really good ad, a really good offer, all that stuff, but the, you know, half of it is just tracking, knowing what to eliminate, and then that's where you get the rest of the way to, pro to profit a lot of times. Sometimes you may not have to revision it at all because the offer is so good, I will admit. I'm just saying, if your profit isn't good enough, there's a way, don't give up. You just have to you know, slice out the part of the account that's doing basically nothing, the 20, 30% that's doing nothing. There's always some 20, 30% that's basically doing nothing and you just gotta find it. Okay, so last thing here, case studies. So real quick here, I'm gonna go over this about different products where this has worked before, where I've done it personally before, and the results that we got. The first one was for a luxury mailbox. So for this, it's a B2C product. We just went after people that basically, um, like the architects and home builders type of thing. So with basically, you can buy a, a, a quality mailbox for your house but people that build houses, they gotta you know, display options for their houses of what kind of mailbox is gonna be, you know, where it's built into the house or whatever, when it is. And um, so they put their mailbox in front of those people, those key decision makers up at those home builders that would be able to actually 
decide which options their customers are showing when they're presented and go through the sales process with their customers about what kind of home they want. Given it's a new concept, this worked well, um, there wasn't really anything out like it then. And get people interested in that particular new concept of design and it worked very well. Why so well? Well, you don't need very many home builders that decide to put that into their catalog before you've made, but practically speaking, one big home builder will pay for $25,000 with the ad spend. That's the type of situation you want to get yourself in if possible because you can't lose in that situation with any of this. You probably don't have to do any revisions to it. You just have to target it like I told you with the right ad like I told you and you're already making money. With PPC it's about trying to come up with one way to make money and then you layer on another and another and this is how you know multi-million dollar ad campaigns are built. And this is just you know, one idea you can have, but 2,500 plus percent ROI in that particular case because the deal size was so big, primarily. Not that it was an amazing ad and you know offer. This was ju just put was sent to a page that explained what the what the, um, the what the mailbox is like, its features, the few features it had, and people responded through a contact form. That that that's all that was. There was no uh, content to download or anything like that. The content download and then the call afterwards, you may have to there certainly have that. If you have something really good, you may not have to have that. In this case, they did not have to have that. Air filters. So right after COVID started, air filter company wanted to advertise their air filters as COVID, you, know, you protect your customers against COVID, and there's dentist offices buying this, and so they advertise it towards the dentist, uh, at the dentist office. Talked about this a little bit briefly, but basically, hey, you know, targeted at dentists. Dentists are using this in their office for their patients and driving that to a page of information about how the dentists are using this, why they're using it, how well it works, that kind of thing. And then, respectively, a way for them to click. In this particular case, you don't need that. Depending on how good your offer is, again, you have a sales page that talks all of just about dentists there, why you would want it for as a dentist, these other dentists, why they picked this one. That's the type of thing you would have to do here, and you have to be decent with copywriting and making landing pages for this to work. But at the end of the page, you click, and you can go to a sales page, which the sales page is just a, a, um, a like a checkout page, which is the same air filter you sell to everybody else, which is what we did in this case. But they thought this was something that was specialized to dentists, and it's not. So technically, when you sell something like an air filter, this is how you build a PPC campaign that gets really good returns. Maybe make an air uh, page that's good for people who have allergies. Talk about how this is the perfect thing for allergies, which it's good for allergies, you're not lying to people, and then make it look like though it's specialized for allergies, that kind of thing. But anyway, they did it that for that on LinkedIn, worked pretty good. 780% ROI on that particular campaign. So there's another idea. You could take a B2C product, package it up into a B2B. Once you see that you have certain B2B customers, which are like dentists for getting it for their offices, and try to sell it to all the other dentists. Spin management. So this particular campaign, the spin management is like where they come into your company and they renegotiate all your contracts. They call your phone company and they say, we want a lower rate, we're gonna switch if you don't give us a lower rate. And they get you a lower rate. And they go to this vendor and they say, can we get a discount? And then they look at this, do we, do we really need this? This looks like it's wasted, there's no reason. You know, and they come to you, like as a CFO, and they say, we saved you all this money, and then basic, or in these things we recommend you cut out because it looks wasted, whatever. Uh, but mostly it's about renegotiating the contracts. Well, anyway, this is not a new concept. So you're not going to excite anybody by seeing this, like with the first two I gave you here. But with that, like I said before, if, it's, if you have a just a common concept out there, you could talk. So we targeted CFOs, and then we went at them with. Um, spend management service saves this amount for this C, uh, this uh, CFO and then CY 
or that well, wasn't an exact that that's the general premise there the general framework the idea being what if I'm a C CFO I want to know what other CFOs are doing to save money because that's my whole thing and so if you're going to tell me how other CFOs are saving five thousand dollars a month or f on five percent of your bill in this particular case it was like per X number of percentage revenue saved or 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 eliminated this much percentage of cost from their company. I'm going to click on that because that's my job to know, and I'm just intrigued to find out how I can make it seem like I'm doing a better job myself. Because they're always looking for, uh, you know, their own promotions and raises and bonuses and whatever too. So we send them to a page that just goes through, like what I was talking about, what they do. We, would, we had this company. We called. We called this place. We did this. We did this. We did this. They save three per, out of their revenue is three percent of what they had. They didn't have to pay anymore, and all they had to do was hire us. We do all the work. So even though it's not a new concept, going further into reveal what kind of results you get specifically, they don't care about so much how you do it. That won't get you anywhere. But we got this much results. CFO, CFOs. Would you like to, this is another way to do it, CFOs, would you like to save 3% of your company's revenue in 30 days? See how we did it with XYZ company. And they click, they go read it. Because you're targeting just CFOs, you could do something like, hey, CFO. And that gets extremely high response rates when you can speak to the person like that. It's not creepy to say CFO. You can't say, hey, you know, diabetes sufferer. Now that's works, but obviously that's crossing the privacy line a little bit, or CFOs absolutely do it, or title, any title, hey, facility manager, or see how this facility, if you don't want to do it, then you just stick with, hey, see how this facility manager end up saving $5,000 a year on their maintenance costs, and then you go that way. So anyway, with that particular thing, and this is a B2B sale, so you aren't going to get people to read that thing and probably respond right away. So that one actually was where they had a um, opt-in first, where you, to get the content, and they tried to you know follow up the leads. As I said, normally I, if if it's a B2, if you're selling B two B normally, you want an opt-in. You want an opt-in form to see how you know X Y Z company saved three percent of their company expenses in thirty days by using a spend management service. And you could, when you, by the way, just to take a quick side here, don't even say that it's you. You, you can, this is called having a blind ad. See how this um, sawmill saved $5,000 a year on their uh, sawmill maintenance costs or See how this sawmill facility maintenance person saved $5,000 on their facility maintenance cost. You're not saying anything about your company yet. It's all about getting the click. So if you can do it, I recommend going this way. And when they get to the landing page, there's an opt-in there. Obviously, they're going to know it's, there's something probably behind this. But uh, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to not say anything about my company up front. And um, so, but if you're selling B2B, you can have your logo up to the uh, top left corner of the screen still, but respectively, there's another an option to have just a, a blank page. There is no logo there. All there is is an opt-in and then well, basically a picture of the ebook that they're going to read with it. Whatever title was on the ad is go basically on the ebook, so they know they're going to get exactly what they saw on the ad. And then there's a little box for them to fill out their name, email, whatever, and they download it. When they get, I always recommend when you get where they where they are going to download it, it's just a PDF that pops up in the browser. They don't have to go to their email because we want them to read it because it's a critical. If they don't read it when we call later on, then we lost our. We, it has to go in order. So when they read it, don't have anything about your logo on the top of the PDF either. Just go right into the content. You don't say anything about you until the very end where you say, Hi, I'm John. I wrote this. Um, I'm from XYZ Company. If you have any questions about this, 
at all, uh, just call me. We're not going to try to sell you anything. You can actually add that. That'll help make people want to actually call you themselves as well. You still call them afterwards, but so you can create a blind ad and a blind landing page and get more results that way. You should definitely try it and test it and see if the blind one version is going to be better for you. But anyway, this particular situation, this actually was a blind ad and a blind landing page that we were taking them to. And from that, you know, like I said, normally on that, that piece of content that they're gonna see, the ebook, if you will, there's nothing mentioned about the company up top, and that, that, and that was the funnel there, okay? So just targeting CFOs, talked about how somebody saved a whole crap load of money and used that as a way to get somebody on the phone that would care to save the same amount of money and were you know, pleasantly impressed about what they read and then used that to build a contact and then eventually a sale. This campaign ended up, because the spend management's a, also it's, it's like a $30,000 sale. They actually take a cut of all the money they saved you, but if you have a, you know, a $5 million a year company and you save them 50 grand a year, even that, you can still make a decent amount of money on. Not as much, not 30 grand, but if it's a $100 million a year company, you can make 30 grand. Uh, very, you know, that's about what it is. So anyway, that helped out the getting the ROI here, but, uh, 1130% ROI on that particular campaign where we run it, where we ran it. So, name of the game is just offer, pound them with tons of value. Don't say anything about yourself. Once they, you think they, they're at the point where they say, "Wow, I am glad I found this. I am glad I read this." You hit them up with a call. You don't try to hard sell them. You put them into, you have them in your database, you follow up, you build, build, build those contacts, and then eventually you're just fielding those contacts once you've built enough of them up. Even though you, once somebody gets enough contacts where they're just following up people, you get another salesperson to handle the new leads because why shut the ad off after it's working? That's the general kind of formula there. The last one was an EMF protection product. So this company sold a product that you, that uh, helps block EMF on cell phones and different devices like that. It's scientifically proven, actually, that not bullshit. Respect <laughs> respectively with that, some people would try to distribute, as is most e-commerce product sellers, you get queries to, for people to resell. And uh, with that, they actually went and they created a informational, a piece of information where you can learn about an opportunity now, like I said, how to do this before, on how to make $50,000 a month selling EMF protection equipment. This one was a blind ad and landing page as well. With that, you know, you get to the, the page, you have to fill out your email, phone number, and all that to get the actual plan, but that was the funnel. They get to the end, um, respectively, you, they can, the, this person did not actually call right away after they read the content. They were waiting for people to call them, relying on the content selling them or not. So there's different people that want to do different things that I talked to, but still a lot of people called because it was like, if you're interested enough to read for 50, you know, spend 15 minutes reading about a business opportunity that could make you 50 grand a month, you know, you're going to get at least you know, three, four, five percent of the people interested enough to actually take it next, another step forward and ask another question, because the content doesn't answer everything, or sh and it actually shouldn't, shouldn't. And you answer the question, and then a certain percentage of those ends up going on and buying, uh, i.e., turn into a distributor. And because that distributor can sell tens of thousands of product long term, and a lot of them will sell just several thousand, but you're at least going to get several thousand uh, thousands of dollars of product sold to that person and because people wanted to click on it at, at a super high rate in that particular case you're only talking about a dollar per click because that's anything like that that you can that you can have like a business opportunity to make this much per month people go crazy over it and um, so respectively it only cost you 
you know, like five bucks to get somebody to read that content, even if only 3% of those people end up responding out of that, right? Then it's you're talking about $100 a lead, if you will. You could talk one out of 10 of those people to end up being a distributor. You got a feasible model there where people are, you know, depending on, of course, how much your average, how much they're selling on average, it costs you a thousand bucks to acquire them. They only sell 4,000 in lifetime sales. That's not good, but some of the people you have will be superstars. So your average might be 10,000 in, in product sales on average. Now you've got a workable 10 to one ROI. So anyway, those were similar numbers to what they were getting. And, um, in terms of the click-through rate and the cost per click and the, the response rate that we're getting from the content and um, all that. The, respectively, what, to take a step further, they actually had an email marketing firm that worked with them too. The people that would fill out the, the, the uh, form to get the content, that would, and which you should be doing it anyway as well, which I didn't talk about, that should go into an autoresponder sequence. And I mentioned many times on this channel, the autoresponder sequences need to be in first person format. Hey, thank you very much for reading their content. If you have any questions, you open up with that. Then the next email is, is saying, you know, here's the why these particular products are so popular now, why the market's growing. And then the next email after that is, you know, you know, basically uh, why these are going to be important in the future. Just more information that's going to get them excited about the opportunity of selling these. You get the idea. Once a week, they get this piece of content that's new, or at least once a month, to keep working on them so that eventually, hopefully, they contact you. So you could do the autoresponder as well. Um, you may want to just do the autoresponder instead of calling them after they download the content, like I said. You have options there. If you wanted the most, you would, or, you know, if you, you know, you're making enough money, you want even more, you can do the autoresponder and the specialized autoresponder just for the people who filled out this specific form, which you should do for the really realistically work, and call them after they download the piece of content as well. Um, for your opportunity isn't quite as good, you may only be able to do the autoresponder based upon the cost of a salesperson. So anyway, just some different options for you there. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed the video and a lot of other videos on this channel about other PPC money making strategies. If you want to check those out, uh, you want to be better at PPC, you should definitely do that. I have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build campaigns. The, one, the way that, our, that we need to use, we use to guarantee our clients' results. If you want to see stuff on a more step-by-step -step basis, you can find it there, possibly, for yourself. With that said, if you have any questions about my LinkedIn strategy here, leave me a comment down below. I get back to every single person at least put a comment on this channel. With that said, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you on my next video that comes out with another great PPC strategy on it in another day or two time. See ya.